Hello folks and welcome to this week's review. I've got an amplifier for you this time. It has a kind of retro aesthetic. It comes from Japan and it's a sort of hybrid solid state valve or tube for my American friends build and it is called the HFSA-01. It arrives from the Japanese outfit as I say Aurora sound. The solid state bit is devoted to the preamp, the valve side of things, that's stuffed into the power module. So that's interesting. It's connected by a phase inverter for the techie minded out there. And it's odd because I normally expect the tubey bit to be on the preamp side and the solid state bit to be on the power amp side. But this Aurora sound amplifier switches that around. So I'd be interested to see how that, what happens in the sound quality tests in that case. Oh, and did I say a price? I'm not sure I did, did I? So the price is £3,699. Now, before we launch into a full techie extravaganza, I think we need to take a closer look. And welcome to the closer look section for the Aurora Sound HFSA01 hybrid integrated amplifier. And I might just call this the 01 for brevity and sanity's sake. So, what we have here is a box full of EL84 valves, four of them push pull, and they provide a grand total of 14 watts, one four, 14 watts per channel. So, Right there, you need to decide just what system you're running and if this power offering is enough to drive your system. Saying that though, saying that, I have sometimes been rather surprised at just how powerful certain low wattage amplifiers can be, especially if they have been efficiently designed. So, again, let's see how that pans out in the sound quality tests. Rectification, because we need to talk about rectification, that has been provided by a Roam silicon carbide, which, says the company, offers very low noise in operation. Let's go on tour now, I think, and let's start at the rear of the chassis. And on the back, we have connections for a built-in phono amplifier, plus a grounding grub screw. This one handles moving magnet only, which, for the price, surprises me. I thought moving coil would be covered in some respect at least. Next to that, going to the right hand side, we have three single ended inputs. We also have, well, more than the usual speaker binding posts. And that's because this particular amplifier handles not just eight ohm speakers, but four ohm speakers as well. And I heartily approve of that. And to the right of those, we have an IEC power socket. Let's nip around to the front now. And on the front, we see rotary, bass, and treble tone controls. I don't like tone controls. I know many of you do. Many of you always disagree with me when I say I don't like tone controls. They're just another hurdle for the sound signal to cross. And when your typical sound signal crosses any hurdles, well, the sound quality tends to dip a little bit. So, I'm not a fan. Personally, I thought the build budget allocated to these tone controls could have been used elsewhere for better quality parts. Or how about, for example, adding a moving coil option to that phono amp? There's just one example. Another example would be to lower the price of the amplifier itself. Anyway, moving on, what I do like about the tone control knobs is when they are not tone control knobs. That is, when using the internal phono amplifier, they act as a sort of alternative EQ suite of curves for older vinyl pressings. Pre-RIAA, you might say. This is an excellent addition, and in my experience, unique to configure it in this manner. Aurora Sound even provide a plate that you can add 
to select the EQ for you. Running further to the right hand side, there's also rotary knobs for volume and sources. Below that and to the left is a power push button. There is a toggle switch to allow you to access the tone controls or to bypass them altogether and go direct through the amplifier. And I kept this direct option on throughout the review. There's a useful stereo and mono switch especially so considering the supplied alternative EQ curves. You also get a 6.35 millimeter headphone port, and I approve of the size of the headphone socket on an amplifier at this price point. One thing to note about the head amp, it is powered by a separate op amp, not the power amplifier section of this unit. So once more, it'll be interesting to get to hear if the personality of the head amp is the same as the amplifier as a whole, or will it go off in a weird tangent? We will see. Speaking of which, how does this box actually sound? Well, let's nip over to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. And welcome to the sound quality tests for the Aurora Sound HFSA01 Integrated Hybrid Amplifier, or as I'm going to call it from now on, the O1. I began with CD as a sound source and Ennio Morricone, and the original soundtrack album to the film, well, some people call it Ecce Omo. Oh, because as you can plainly see, I have a classical Latin approach to life. So I pronounce this one. Okay, Omo. Oh, and the next bit is, I think, E Sopra Vissuti, and apologies to my Italian friends if I've completely messed that one up. The soundtrack, in case you're interested, was released in 1969 for the film of the same name. This particular CD was released in 2002 on Daggered, the Daggered label. The actual music is quite sparse, avant-garde, I would say, orchestral wind and string instruments, which is of great use while testing hi-fi. The music itself offers orchestral punctuation, you might say, plus the odd vocalization. It's challenging. Put it this way, you won't find it being played at your sister's wedding. There's no dad dancing off the back of this one, let me tell you. First impression of the amplifier itself, well, it offers an efficient design. And that 14 watt output, well, surprisingly more than enough to drive my reference system. And I was running low sensitivity quad 57 electrostatic speakers. Yes, I did have to up the gain, which was no surprise. But saying that this amplifier never ran out of puff. It never felt strained. It never felt underpowered during my tests. Next, Focus. There's a tremendous focus from the O1. I'm used to rather bombastic, sprawling bass for my reference amplifier, which, in case you want to know, is a very heavy because it's packed with transformers offering from Lima. I'll put a picture on screen so you can see it. Anyway, the O1 tuned the bass to be compact, full of impact, sure, but also neat and tidy and still powerful, but also lean. The bass from this track also trailed lots of reverb, and that was here too via the O1. But the lightness of that reverb contrasted well with the meaty bass. Female vocalizations on this album were also precise and disciplined, and that was something else from the O1. All frequencies were disciplined. This album promotes frequency chaos. It's so easy for an amplifier to overdo it and move beyond the boundaries so that the mids are ragged and the bass is rather boomy, but not here. Frequencies via the O1 were tight, honed, and condensed. That in itself allows the music to increase the pace. It never ever dragged. I then challenged this amplifier with a tale of passion from the punk band Serious Drinking and the footballing tale of passion, Love on the Terraces, from the vinyl album, The Revolution Begins at Closing Time. I also noticed a pair of Martin Logan 15i speakers nearby, which offered a higher sensitivity figure, which meant, of course, 
less gain from this amplifier, so I hook those to my hi-fi chain. Hence, the amplifier didn't have to try nearly as hard to find the same volume level. Now, sorting out the crashing, punky arrangements from this album is a challenge for any amplifier, but the O1 did a superb job, adding a sense of order to the band itself while improving the vocal diction and delivery. The low noise around the mids certainly helped on that score. Moving over to the headphones now, and I plugged in a pair of Sennheiser HD 800s to access the built-in head amp. The general sonic envelope is similar to the amplifier. If anything, the mids are cleaner, uh, stripped, and sparse with enough bass to keep the pace of the music high, but the overall sound is not quite as rich as the speaker output. As for the built-in phono amplifier, well, I connected a Riga RP3 to that very module, and I played the same serious drinking LP. And I have to say, I was surprised at the quality of this built-in phono amp. Clarity around the upper mids was there. There was enough bass to form a solid foundation for the track as a whole, while there was plenty of detail to keep you engaged. I have to say, this is one of the best internal phono amps I've heard for some time. And that's basically the review. Let me add a suite of final thoughts for you, then I'll give you some pros and cons, and then a rating. Well, I was impressed by the, well, let's give it its full name, the Aurora Sound HFSA01 Integrated Hybrid Amplifier. I loved the retro look. I liked the solid feel, the practical interface. And while I wasn't exactly enamored by the tone controls, I loved the quirky vinyl EQ tools. More than any of that, though, I was impressed with the focused, lean, and clean low noise sound. Pros and cons. And in the good section, we have low noise. Well, low noise allows more detail to come through all over the frequency spectrum. So very happy to hear that. Bass particularly was focused and it had a tightness and a leanness and that helped the music to maintain its pace. In terms of the mid-range, both precision but also detail was a highlight of the mid-range. And in broad design terms, I loved the retro aesthetics. This one looks good. It will look nice on your shelf. And in the bad section, I didn't like the tone controls, but we've talked about that. And that's not going to affect the final score, which is an award-winning rating of eight out of 10 and a groovy. So congratulations to Aurora Sound. And that's it folks, thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And before you go, can you click down yonder the like and subscribe buttons please? Helps to keep this channel moving forwards, even though I'm going upwards, which doesn't make much sense, does it? So moving forwards, which to use now backwards. I'll stop, it, this could get messy. Anyway, in addition, Further down, there is or are a selection of links. One is to my website. Check that out. All kinds of stuff over there you won't see here. And it's still new and snazzy. And there's my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join. There is also my Patreon page, which has the latest version of Hi Fi News, etc. Exclusive to Patreon. I did a few free sample vids, you might say, a few weeks ago, which you may have seen. And you can check it out in the playlist, it's there. But generally speaking, they are exclusive to Patreon. So check out Patreon for that. There's all kinds of other stuff over there. Buyers guides, music features, sci-fi tour, all that jazz. Anyway, I'll be back on when? Friday for a music alerts. What have I got through the post? Physical products, CDs, vinyl books, kind of video, sort of quick tour of what I've received during the week. Check that out on Friday, and I hope to have your company. And until then, folks, bye-bye for now.